Today, this isn't about me, this is about you. So I want you to raise your expectation. And I want you to understand something. Every person in this earth was born with two things, all right? You were born with a genius and a gift, all right? Let's say it again. Every person created in this world was born with two things, a genius and a gift. It's given to you, it's your birthright. Now, there's another thing that we all were dropped into, this life, okay? So you have your genius, your gift, and then you have life. Life is what you have to navigate through to maximize the potential of your gift. You don't have to maximize the potential of your genius because your genius when your genius is connected to your gift, that's when you get the manifestation of greatness. Okay? So the genius is already at its maximum potential. The gift is what needs exercise. But then there's life. And then there's distractions. Okay? The most important aspect to ever accomplish whatever you want to accomplish in your life has nothing to do with anything outside of you. It's not. We live in a society, I've done it, you've done it, we point the finger and blame everybody for our mistakes and everything we've done, everything we've done to our bodies, to the people around us. This is how it is. But the biggest issue is never outside of us. All the money you want, all the success you want, all the promotion you want, the help you want is not outside of you. It's inside of you. And if you're willing to give birth to it, that is connected to your gift. Your gift has to attach to your genius. When your gift attaches to the genius, then you start changing lives, you start making an impact. That's where your wealth is. Because you're, you're put on this earth to serve people. Your genius is here, it's, it's given to you to serve and impact people. So that's why you see there's people in this world like the Eric Thomases of the world. And then there was the Michael Jordans and LeBron James and all the great pastors and all the great speakers. They connected to their genius. And what followed? That makes sense? So it doesn't matter what you do in life, you still have a genius. Now, you may have more than one gift. I don't think, and I'm not very religious, but I don't think God would just give you one gift and say this is all you get. I think he gave you a handful of gifts that you have to nurture. Because think about it, if, if he just gave everything to you you know, and just say, go live, we're going to destroy ourselves because we're not going to know how to manage it. See, I went, some I went through some things in my life, even as much as recently, the last 16 months that prepared me for what's getting ready to happen the first of the year. I had to work on my character. My character was bad. It was bad. It wasn't good. I made some poor choices. And my character was just, my character would not have been able to handle the level of success I'm getting ready to walk into. There's no way. There's just no way. So you gotta look at where you're at right now and everything you're facing and everything you're dealing with and you gotta, it's not a bad thing. It's there for a reason because your genius is boiling inside of you and wants to manifest itself through the world. You know, I sit here, and I put my head down over there because I realized you guys were giving recognition um, to the, the fellas over here and it broke my heart. I just, I kind of got a little emotional because I started thinking about my childhood and thinking about my dad not being there and thinking about my mom being struck out on drugs and prostituting and, and taking care of my little sisters and, and, and the things I had to endure at that time. And then I started thinking about generational curses and how things are just handed down because of what we see and we learn through life and go through different things and it's all because of what we've seen, but we don't have that blueprint. See, I have a little son, his name's Chris Jr. And uh, 
I wanted to name him Chris Jr. for a reason. And I thank his mom so much for allowing me to name him Chris Jr. Because I, when I looked at him, he's three years old, when I looked at him, I said, you know what? I want to name him Chris Jr. because I want him to be the better Chris Downey. I don't want him to be nothing like me. I want him to be the better Chris Downey. So I want to make sure I gave him what my father didn't give me. Some people may say, I think you're living through your son, but no, what I think I'm doing is I'm healing myself from my past and my pains and my hurts through how I'm raising my son. And I look at him and I, and I look at all the gifts and, and all the smile on his face and his excitement. And I'm thinking, man, this kid doesn't have a worry in this world. He doesn't worry about anything. How do I get back to that place while still pursuing my dreams and living in a chaotic world? How do I get back to that place? So I start thinking about these guys and I'm saying to myself, man, I don't know what their talents are or what their genius are or, or whatever it is that's distracting them to end up in this position but it's still greatness in them. And, and I know for a fact that if they can just connect to their genius, they're gonna come back here one day, they're gonna speak to the summit, they're gonna be out impacting people's lives, and then they're gonna come back here, and they're gonna thank the board, they're gonna thank all these people who had an impact on their life. So guess what, so what if you don't have your dad? So what if your mom may be going through things? You know what, that does not define who you are. You're here for a reason. So now you're gonna say I was in DYS, and at first I was, I was frustrated, I was angry, there's other inmates here, they're angry, I gotta protect myself because I might get into a fight, but you was really here just so I can give you this message and the messages they gave you. You're not defined by your past, man. You're defined by what you believe and what you see. You're defined by that gift and that greatness and that genius that's dwelling inside you. See, most of us, including myself, we spend so much time frustrated. Remember I said it has nothing to do with anything outside of you. You're frustrated because your genius and your gift is knocking on the inside of you. Let me out of here. Let me out of here. But you don't really, you're not understanding, you're distracted. So when you're distracted, that causes chaos. That causes emotional disturbances. That causes anger. That causes frustration. But all along that genius is saying, let me out of here. I just, I, I want to help you. It don't have to be this hard. This, 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 I just need you to eat a little healthier. I just need you to, to work out. I just need you to pick up that book and just read this one book. Because it, it's going it's to make you believe so you can believe that I'm in here. Because I'm really in here. But, I, but I'm tired of being in here. I, I need out. My purpose is outside of you so that I can touch someone else's life. You understand what I'm saying? I look at the youth leaders. Do you have any idea how powerful of individuals you are? Let me explain to you. You come to a job every day that you're uncertain of what's going to take place during your shift. Before you walk through that door, you have to turn around and literally leave all your personal stuff, anything you're dealing with, your dreams, anything you're, you're struggling with at the door to go in to manage someone else's emotions. So then you got to be mindful, okay, this is my job, which is maybe this is part of my genius, so how do I go in here and be effective, but I got stuff that I can't take in here because there's a kid that if my stuff and his stuff collide, we're going to have a problem today. Let me say that again. If my stuff and his stuff have a confrontation, we're going to have a problem. And that's not even my, my purpose to even being here. That ain't, he already had enough. That's why he's in here right now. So then you got to figure out as a youth leader how to walk in this place because you have a team of people. You got to be able to complement everything that they're doing to make the facility run effectively, correct? So how do I leave this here, deal with this issue for these eight hours, and then go back home, leave this here and go back home and not take this home with me? Do you have any idea how powerful of an individual you are to manage all that? That's a lot. And then you have, you have the heads, the directors, the, the, the ones that everyone doesn't see all the time. They get to deal with the criticism. They have to deal with the pressure of not letting all this outside chaos affect the inmates, to rouse them, to get them aroused, and to not affect the staff, to get them distracted. How do I manage that to be able to still have the power and the ability to speak to my people, to lead them in the right direction? You guys have a lot of pressure. 
You have a lot of pressure because you got stuff too. Some of you dealing with health problems. But you gotta go to work every day because you gotta feed your family, you gotta provide for your household. Some of you just lost a loved one. Now your emotions are a little disturbed. You're hurting, but you gotta go to work with a smile on your face because you can't take that. Because you know what, in, in, in a situation like that, they call that weakness. But you're a human being. So how do I manage that? Or you have a son or, or a nephew or, or, or this, just, just out there that you, you're concerned about. You don't, want him, you don't want him to come in here because maybe you, don't, maybe you don't get along with an inmate. You don't want your relative in here because then it might be a problem for him. So there's so much different things that we all deal with to perform our duties, perform our job, right? So let me break this down. This is how we're going to be able to manage this. I know this is all about team, and I love team, but before you can ever be impactful as a team, you have to be impactful in yourself first. The most important person in your life is you. Period. Say that again. The most important human being in your life is you. It's not your spouse. It's not your kids. Here's the reason why I say that. Because if you're not operating at your maximum potential, you're not able to give your spouse, you're not able to give your kids, you're not able to give your staff or the inmates your truest potential, all of you. You're robbing them. So, you say, Chris, how do I do that? There's three things that's going to connect you to your genius. Mind, body, and soul. Your mind is hands down the most powerful element you have. It controls your thoughts, controls your emotions, and controls your destiny. Flat out. Your mind is the most powerful part of your, part of your being. It controls your thoughts, your emotions, your actions, your destiny. Your body is what you need to equip so that you're able to walk out and navigate through life to strengthen and develop your, your, your gift so that you can attach to your genius so that you can impact the world. And your soul, your soul is who you are. That's what everybody sees. So how do I protect my mind? What are you thinking about? It's that simple. What are you thinking about on a daily basis? I am huge on the law of attraction. I believe in it. I've seen it happen. I've seen it happen in my own situation. To be honest with you, last uh, January, I wrote myself a letter. And I put it, uh, my 2016. And in 2016, I wrote out everything I wanted to happen as if it was happening. Crazy part about it is none of it was happening at that time. But I was in such a depressed and a, and a state of just disappointment and embarrassment that I needed to connect to something. If I was to listen to everybody outside the doors, it's a wrap. It's, it's done. It's over with for me. So I already know what happens if I don't exercise this, 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 these principles. Yes, you're imaginary, call me crazy, that's fine. Because I already know I'm gonna be crazy if I, just, if, if I listen to everything else. So I, what do I have to lose? So I might as well go ahead and be crazy. So I wrote out this list of stuff. And I went, personal life and family, my business, dreams, and hopes. And every time I got down, I started reading this to myself. With a smile on my face, I tried to connect with it emotionally. And I would smile. I just, I, just needed to, I just needed to get that feeling. All I needed was a feeling. Because I know for a fact that physically it wasn't going to change. It wasn't going to manifest at that moment. But if I could connect to the feeling of it, the emotion of it, I'm going to attract the circumstances that's going to allow me to connect to that, which is, which is attached to my gift, which is what? Attached to my genius. But I needed to feel it. You can't tell me you don't have a sense of feeling because if you feel angry with somebody and you play it in your head, eventually you end up arguing with them. <laughs> Am I right? Or you get a circumstance where you think about it, you connect with it emotionally, and it happens. When you connect with something emotionally, it's coming. It is coming. 
Other than that, it's just a thought. That's why I'm so huge on all my athletes, even my kids. I make them create vision boards. Here's the reason why. When I'm going through some of the roughest times, this is what I convince myself. This board is my life. This board is what my reality is. This situation I'm dealing with is just temporary. So that keeps me from being connected to my temporary state that I don't want to be in. But if I'm looking at this board and I see love and joy and peace and happiness, and I see pictures of my kids' face, you know what, this problem really isn't that bad because that's my real life right here. That's what I had to convince myself. And when I started doing that, all of a sudden, all these opportunities started happening. And I'm thinking, wow, this really works. And next thing you know, I'm being connected to different people that I'm able to help. Man, I have a YouTube channel. My, my YouTube channel has nearly three million views. I probably get about nine or 10 emails a month from people from all over the country that watch the training. And guess what? It has nothing to do with the training. It has everything to do with me internalizing my pain and my hurt and my disappointment and channeling it inside and using it as my passion to motivate other people. They're not attracted to the training. You put 10 trainers up here, we gonna all do the same thing. They're attracted to the engagement. They're attracted to the engagement. They're attracted to the passion, my cry. I'm crying out, but I'm, I'm crying out in, such a, in a positive light. That's what they're attracted to because guess what? They're hurting. So what? I'm releasing this pain, releasing this passion, re releasing this hope. Listen, what are you selling? I'm selling hope. And it's attracted to somebody that's empty and they're attaching to it. It's just operating through my gift, which is training. It's nothing to do with training. I don't care if you get abs or not. So what? It's <laughs> nothing to do with abs, man. It's nothing to do with it. It's nothing to do with that. It has everything to do with, man, this dude is really, he touched me. You see what I'm saying? But I had to go through life some experiences so that it's authentic. So when I speak it to you, you feel it. I can't sit up here and talk to you about something I haven't lived, because then I'll be in textbook. That's not gonna touch you. You need a situation. You need something I've been through so you can feel my passion. I'm throwing my hand down. Y'all feel this, don't you? You know you feel it. Oh, how heavy is his arms? I don't lift weights, I just do this. That's what you're feeling. Because I, I mean what I'm saying. So fellas, when I, when I look at you and I tell you, you have greatness in you. You have so much potential. This is just this is just a setback for you to do something so amazing. So amazing. I don't care what it is. I don't care what it is. I don't care how old you are. If that dream is still alive in you, go for it. I don't care. Guess when the, guess when the dream ends? When you, when you die, you stop believing. And when you stop believing, you might as well be dead. Because when you stop believing, you're opening yourself up for things you don't want in your life. But as long as you believe in, you're allowing it to come. So I don't care what it is. I don't care the best thing, ooh, watch this. The best thing, the best thing that can happen for you is when people say you can't do it. Now, let me give you, a, 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 hold on. Let, me, let me give you something. There's two parts to this. When they say you can't do it, you cannot, Use that as a form to say, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna show, I'm gonna prove them wrong, I'm gonna, I'm gonna show them you're in the wrong lane. That's gonna do with that's not serving. When they say you can't do it, you know what that means? It really means you can. It really means it's real. If everybody agree with everything you did or everything you do in life, get away from them. They mislead you. You need life, man. You need those obstacles. That's how you work out. If I put 225 on the bench, I'm probably gonna get it stuck on my chest. I'm a fool, I'm not, I might be big, but I ain't that strong. But if I put 225 on my chest, and I'm punching, I'm pumping this thing, I'm getting a pump, I'm exercising something. Because I want my arms and my chest to get bigger. But this life, y'all work out every day and don't even know it. Look at the situations you're dealing with. You're exercising, you're working out. You know, two things are gonna happen. You're gonna let it defeat you, or you're gonna build up that muscle, which is gonna build up your character, it's gonna build up your strength, it's gonna build up your emotions, it's gonna build up your faith, and you're gonna go out and accomplish whatever you wanna accomplish. You need life. You need this. So listen, when you look at situations you deal with, and you connect with it emotionally, and you really don't wanna go through it, only thing you're doing is allowing it to stay there. You wanna get rid of it? Start exercising against it. It's gotta go. Let it, let it do what it's supposed to do for you. Because if you do nothing, it's just gonna stay. 
And then you're going to get distracted. And then you're going to get frustrated. And then you're going to give up. And then you're going to blame somebody else when all along, it's on you. It's on you. When all this plane stuff was happening, and he said, Terrence is taking down planes. So I was flying, I uh, had a photo shoot. So I was flying uh, to California, and this precious old lady looked at me, and she was like, honey, can I ask you a question? I was like, sure. She was like, are you afraid of this plane going down? I did like this. I said, to the right. I said, ma'am, if this plane crashed, I'm getting off of it. <laughs> this is what I believe. Believe <laughs> me. Listen to me. If this plane crashed, CNN will be at the scene and say, this brother got off the plane. <laughs> because I'm not dying. I put that in my mind. If this, I'm, I'm going to be in the books. I'm getting off this. I'm walking right. Walking right off. How did he do it? Because I believed it. I put myself to have no fear in anything. Because I already know what happens when I fear. I already know what's going to happen. So I'm not worried about a terrorist. I, I treat him like I treat anybody else. What do you say? He had a little towel back on his head. I looked at him and I was like, how you doing? It, it just, it is what it is. You can't let people control your destiny. Now, there's another thing I'm going to pick up on. Two more, two more things and I'm going to close. This is the most important. Especially when dealing with a team. So, when you're back to being an individual, you have your mind, body, and soul, okay? You guys have goals as a, as, a, as, a, as a company, which is great. You want to see these goals thrive? You want to get some serious attention? If every person looks and analyzes their life and be honest with themselves, okay, I need to exercise more. I need to process what I put in my body. What you eat, affects your brain. I'm telling you right now. It took me to get a gluten allergy to understand that. What you eat affects your brain. It does. Because the pesticides, they spray on food, and all the chemicals, we ingest that. When we ingest that, your body will inflame. Let me say that again. A lot of us, deal with inflammation. The inflammation is your body fighting off the chemicals that you ingested. Okay, now watch, this is good stuff, watch. How many of us right now have joint problems? Some form of joint problems, okay. You have joint problems because you're not getting the nutrients to your joints, which means you're eating something, your body's natural Defense is to protect you. So it raises up antibodies and raises up the, the necessary elements to protect your body. When it rises up to protect you, it inflames you to say stop. You can't go further past this point, okay? What happens is the nutrients you need to get to your joints and, and tendons become malnourished. When they become malnourished, they hurt. It makes sense? The food you put in your body affects your brain. Now, someone says, I ain't buying all that organic food. I ain't doing it. It costs too much. So I had a client. I told her, I said, listen, I need you to eat this right here. So what I need you to eat, and it needs to be all organic. She said, you got your mind. I am not going to spend all that money on organic food. I said, well, what's the difference? She said, it costs more. I said, can I see a checkbook? She looked at me like I was crazy. I said, well, I don't want to find your business, but can I see your checkbook? Okay, so I went down three pages. I said, did you need this? No. Did you need this? No. Did you need this? No. Did you need this? Oh, we went out for a company function. Okay, I let that slide. Did you need this? Did you need this? Did you need this? Did you need this? Added it up, $675.23. There's your groceries. It was my going to her. She was like, wow. I didn't realize that. So she made the necessary adjustments, looks outstanding right now. So it doesn't necessarily have to be organic, but if you buy some food, scrub the heck out of it before you, before you cook it. Scrub it. It will, it will lessen, the, lessen the impact of the chemicals. 
So what I want you guys to understand is, again, I'm, I'm just doing some suggestions. Get with your team. Set a goal, all right? Everyone has to commit to something, all right? You have to commit to a healthier lifestyle. Once you commit to a healthier lifestyle, you're gonna feel better, you're gonna have more energy, you're gonna to come to work in a better mood, you're gonna impact your employees, your employees are gonna impact his inmates, and now these kids, when they come to the DYS, they're not coming to something for punishment. They're coming to be restored and set free. But it all starts with the head. It goes from the head up, head down. Instead of everybody having chemical problems and then the staff dealing with chemical stuff, the kids already got chemical stuff and then they got all this chaos. If the staff can commit to, and I listen, I'll be more than happy to help you. I'll be more than happy to help you in any way I can. Come up with a structured plan as far as nutrition, as far as a fitness plan, you can have it. I don't care. I'll give it to you. And do it, you know, modify it for the time being. Do it as a staff. If you guys have memberships, hold some accountability. Okay, this is this month's workout. Everyone has to turn it in that has been done. And you can't lie because if your body don't change, you ain't doing it. <laughs> you can't lie. If your body's not changing, we know you ain't doing it. You're in it. So, so yeah, that's what you do. And then all of a sudden, everything's gonna start changing. Everybody's gonna be happy. We're gonna have more power when we speak to each other, when we speak to the staff, when we speak to the kids. And one more thing before I close. I need you guys to take something very serious from this moment forward. You wanna be happier? You, want, you, you really wanna enjoy bliss and, and, and everything you create? Come on, man. If you like me, I am sick and tired of being sick and tired and being sick and tired of taking hooks, jabs, and uppercuts from life. I'm tired of it, man. And it's all by the choices I made and the choices we made. If you want to live this life of bliss and love and happiness and success, please take your genius and your gift personal. Own it. I don't care how old you are. If you wake up, that's another day you can go after it. If you want to go back to school, go back to school. Go back to school. If it's part-time for now, part-time for now. Keep the job. Do what you got to do to make yourself happy. Because the last thing you want is 30, 40 years from now to be miserable because you have all this gift, all this potential. This genius never got to expose itself to the world, and now you're unhappy. And what you're going to do is you're going to pass that down to your kids because they're watching you. Just told my, my cousin two days ago, he's going through a really tough time. I said, man, you got three boys. You're the superhero. They watching how you deal with adversity, how you deal with everything. They're going to model themselves. You have so much influence over them right now. And they're young boys. They're going to come to a point in their life where they're going to hit a situation, and the first thing they'll think is, how did my daddy deal with that? Well, I'm about to go crazy. He did it. That's, that's, that's real, that's serious stuff. So I don't care what it is you're dealing with, you're a human being, you're blessed with potential, you're blessed with life, you're blessed with genius and talent and gifts, you can overcome anything you want if you believe. Thank you so much.